Yeah. Hello, everybody. I'm just going to, yeah. I'm really sorry about the technical difficulties there. Had a bit of a drama, but we're all good. We got there in the end. Can you hear us all right, guys? Thumbs up, Fab. Thank you. Brilliant. Um, we're just going to give it a few minutes for people to have, who have got access to the new link to join, um, just so that we've got as many people in before we start as possible. Um, yeah, those of you that just, just joined, I'm really sorry about the technical difficulties we had there. Um, we'll we'll go over by 15 minutes so we get the full hour. Yeah. <laughs> also, guys, um, before more people join, I just want to clear up where I am because I understand that my surroundings look a bit weird. I'm sat in my dad's camper van on the front drive because I live with my dad and my brother and it's quarter past six in the evening here, so they want to make their tea, they want to make their food. So I've been kicked out to the camper van as my new home. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm here. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, it's so good to see so many people here. It's one of those things where like, you like sign up to an event like this and I'm like, is anybody even going to yeah. join? <laughs> when, when we uh, sent out, because we were obviously on the meeting first, and when we thought no one was joining, we were like, it's just me and you, Kat. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Oh, brilliant. More people. It's nice and early in the morning for you guys if you're joining from like the US or Canada, like 10 a.m. So snaps to you guys for actually getting up and joining in. I really appreciate it. Honestly, you've probably got really busy days, but most of you are probably stuck in isolation like us, aren't you? So, <laughs> yeah, Groundhog Day. <laughs> just let you know, I have muted you all just because, like, if everybody started talking all at the same time, it would be like chaotic. You're gonna wish that we were muted by the end of this, guys. <laughs> <laughs> For real. Okay, we'll give it another minute and then we'll, um, We'll begin. I'm super excited for this. It'll be good. It's my first ever live, like, and recorded podcast, guys. This is a big day in the DPC history. <laughs> I'm super excited. I feel like Kat as well. We didn't, because me and Kat have spoken about what we're going to talk to you guys about. And obviously, it's predominantly question based because it's about you guys. You know, it's up to you to ask whatever you want. But I feel like we should also say what we do, give a bit of background to us as well, Kat. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Yeah, 100%. Um, well, I'll tell you what, it's quarter past six now. People can kind of join as they're carrying on. I'm going to get rid of the waiting room now so people can just carry on joining in as the meeting goes on. Um, so I suppose for starters, I'll introduce myself. Um, my name is Kat Hooker. I am the founder of the Dead Parent Club podcast. Um, it's my baby. I love it. <laughs> it's been running now since like October 2017. 2018 um and yeah it's just been kind of like the best part i suppose of my grieving journey um i've had the opportunity to talk to so many people over the last year and a half um and i've met so many friends also in the dead parent club um and in the dead mums club like a lot of us are today and yeah it's just going to be a really exciting opportunity to kind of get to know well for all of you to get to know the dead parent club and hopefully it'll be a resource that you guys can use going forward as well and listen to everybody else's stories and listen to people that are just like you so that's me i'm kat i'm also obviously i'm from the uk and um, you can probably tell by the accents and stuff mm -hmm. um so yeah you might have heard of manchester in the uk i live near manchester and yeah and this is my dear friend emma who i got to join in the podcast with me today um, obviously I had to find somebody who I could have a really nice conversation with for a good long hour and Emma is just amazing inside and out so I'm sure you guys will love her but yeah over to you Emma to introduce yourself as well. Uh, yeah really nice conversation there's nothing like getting dark is there with each other. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm also in the UK for anyone who's joined that wasn't here earlier um, the reason I look like I'm in a weird place is because I'm in my dad's camper van I live with my dad and brother and I've been summoned to the camper van so that they can make their food. Um, <laughs> So Kat and I actually know each other through my twin brother. They became friends first. Um, oh, and then obviously, the as we've been in the DPC, you have a connection. And put in. Obviously, we bonded over the dead mum part. Yeah. 
<laughs> it was always going to happen, wasn't it? Uh, but I'm a radio presenter over here in the UK. So, and I do little bits of TV as well. So I'm used to talking. So if I talk too much, feel free to tell me to shut up. <laughs> Just put like thumbs down on like, yeah. the screen. Or, like use the chat. Like Emma, can you shut up? You've been talking for ages. Um, but this is all about you guys and me and Kat are really, really open. So we want this to be a safe space for you to ask as many questions as you want. Nothing's too weird, nothing's too strange. And I guarantee it's nothing that we haven't heard before or that we haven't thought ourselves. Oh yeah, literally, honestly, I bet. Um, just to give a kind of introduction to the episode that we've got planned anyway. Um, obviously this is just kind of guidelines, um, just that we've also always got something to talk about, but you guys can derail that as much as you want if you just want to pipe up on like the chat um, bot at the bottom of Zoom and ask us anything at any point, and um, we'll definitely prioritise answering your questions first. Um, but yeah, in this episode, we're going to tell our own stories because obviously there's no point in us kind of talking to you about our grief journeys without you actually knowing what the hell happened first. Um, and then we're going to talk about our experiences of Mother's Day. Um, obviously in the UK, Mother's Day falls on a different day. So it's kind of weird for us talking about Mother's Day on like a completely different day of the year. <laughs> um, and then we're going to talk about our um, milestones in life as well, because obviously Mother's Day is just one of the many milestones we have to face um, when we're grieving, because they're dotted throughout the year continuously and we can never escape them. And then one of the biggest things for Emma and I is that we have found happiness, which sometimes when you're grieving can seem completely unattainable and it's like you're swimming towards a bright light, but you just can't get there. Um, so yeah, that's maybe the main thing that we end on, just because we think that's the most important thing. Um, and you know, in the Dev Club podcast, we finish every single episode on a positive note so I always ask the guests like you know what's your grief journey taught you or like has it changed your attitude to life and has it changed your life in general and everyone always has just something really positive and amazing to say and I think you know there's no point in us talking about something so dark and you know getting into the nitty-gritty without ending it on something that people can kind of see as being attainable at some point so yeah so yeah super excited to get into it um I guess I'll tell you my own story first. I'll try and keep it as brief as possible. It's not something that I actually do very often anymore. I'm usually the one asking other people to tell me their like darkest stories. Um, but I am 24 now. My mum died when I was 20 on November the 5th, 2015. So over here, it's actually bonfire night. It probably isn't. No, it won't be, will it? Because it's a different kind of tradition. So bonfire night is like Guy Fawkes kind of this guy tried to blow up parliament many many years ago obviously and yeah now we have a kind of night on november the 5th every year we have fireworks and bonfires and just kind of like a bit of a celebration so the night my mum died there were actually fireworks going into the sky which was kind of a really weird feeling um so basically my mum died after a kind of long three-year battle with cancer and um, she got diagnosed when i was 17 with bowel cancer got the all clear and then unfortunately a few months later we found out that it had metastasized to her lungs and had been she'd been diagnosed terminal um at that point she had between a year and two years to live and yeah she died about 19 months later in our family home surrounded by everybody that loved her the most um so my dad my two brothers myself she was part of a really big family so we had like my aunties and uncles there and we were really lucky actually that she was at home at the time um, yeah, obviously it was a really difficult part of my life, mostly because people kind of say to you, oh, you know, you must have been expecting it, you must have time to prepare for it, but nobody, like, you can't prepare for, like, the, one of the most important people in your life to die, like, no matter how long you're given, um, it still comes as a huge and massive shock. Um, so kind of my whole experience of cancer and kind of coping without my primary caregiver really because she was the one that I literally looked to for everything and at quite a pivotal time of your life as well you know your 20s um before I turned 21 and my parents had just celebrated their 30th wedding anniversary three days before in our family home um surrounded by all of our kind of family and friends as well which was beautiful um and we're yeah we're really blessed um I suppose I don't really know how much detail to go into to be honest you know anybody who has lost a parent's cancer as well you'll know how difficult it is and the kind of anticipatory grief feelings that you get before they die knowing that something bad is something really bad is going to happen but you just don't know when or what life is going to be like after it because it's just so huge um Kat, 
can I ask a question there? Yeah, um, you can. In that in that period of time when you kind of knew your mum was going to die, but obviously you didn't know when or what it was going to be like. What are the feelings that you remember having during that period? Um, it was honestly, I was a bit. I kind of shied away from it quite a lot. I actually didn't accept it. I think acceptance is one of the hardest things. So like before my mum was going to die, I was accepting that that was going to happen. And afterwards, even now, it's accepting that she's dead and she's gone. Um, and I think kind of, I don't know, I, I always look back and I wish that I had taken it more seriously. The fact that she was going to, you know, die and no longer be with us anymore. I wish that I had kind of acknowledged that and spent more time with her. And I think it's something that a lot of us wish that we had done. Um, if we have been given the opportunity to like know um, before the worst kind of thing happens but yeah I think it was more than anything acceptance and denial and feeling scared and kind of being scared to tell people about it as well um, I remember I started dating somebody I was at university at the time so I obviously spent too much of my time out drinking and boozing <laughs> rather than actually kind of at home spending time with my mum which is what I wish I had been doing um, but at the same time, I made so many amazing friends during that period as well. But yeah, I started dating somebody and I remember it was like four o'clock in the morning after a night out at some point and we were lying in bed and I was like, by the way, I've got something to tell you. And he was like, what? And I was like, my mum's going to die. And he was like, what? Like, what? And that, that was just, to me, because I was a little bit drunk and that was just the easiest way to say it, to just say it outright like that. And this guy was just like, oh my God, like when? And I was like, I don't know. I just knew it was going to happen. <laughs> It's just such a weird conversation to have with somebody. And I think it kind of gives them the opportunity at that point to either be like, I'm not getting involved with this or jump right in and to be fair, I nearly did. Why, um, why did you think that saying, you know, telling someone that your mum was going to die or that being a thing would make somebody not want to be with you? I think it's more the pressure we put on ourselves, right? I think even after our loved one dies, we think that no, but people, our friends don't want to hear about it. And we think, you know, this is too big for them. This is going to be too much for them. And you just don't speak about it as much as you wish that you could. And I think, yeah, with that, I was very much just scared of him being like, that's going to be way too much. Like, going through that, like, this girl's going to go crazy. Um, which I, I definitely did. I won't deny that. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I know I certainly felt this. Did you worry in the, the immediate aftermath or even in the build-up that um how other people would perceive you because i know um because we were both quite young i was worried about being known as the girl with the dead mom yeah then, like, yeah <laughs> i literally had that conversation when i was at uni after um, my mum had died I, I i was living there for a year and um the guy look like, i was out on a night out and i sat, sat next to one of my friends and i was crying he was like what's wrong with you and I was like, I just don't want to be known as the girl with the dead mom anymore. And he's like, can't nobody think so how you like that? I was like, I really think they do, but it's just for our own brains. Like, yeah. I mean, honestly, it's so unlikely that people actually, I mean, don't get me wrong. I think if you're in a very small, um, like a small school or a small college and everybody knows about it, then there is probably going to be an inst a few instances after you come back and, you know, after, after your loss and people are probably going to be like, oh my God, that girl's mum died or whatever, but you're not going to become known for that unless you create a dead parent club podcast like this. <laughs> no, no, I definitely have. I, re I remember though, um, the day that my mum died and obviously everyone reacts to it in different ways, but a girl that I knew called me and said, Emma, I've just been told your mum's died. And I said, yeah, she has. And she went, no, she hasn't. I said, no, no, she definitely has. And she went, no, she hasn't, because you wouldn't be talking like this with me right now. You wouldn't be, you'd, you'd be crying. And then I went to the pub that night, our local pub, um, with a few of my friends, just because I wanted to be around people. I didn't want to be on my own. And I remember people being quite standoffish and almost in a group, almost stepping forward one by one to hug me. And I remember thinking... Oh, it's so awkward. Yeah, this is not helpful. I wanted to be like, yes, yeah, she's dead. Like, we can all talk about it. Just come and give me a hug all together. Like, you don't have to stand over there. And it was just... <laughs> Q forming yeah, like, 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 it's so weird like it, it's not my funeral what are you doing like just <laughs> and and I don't think people don't do that with any bad intent they do it because unless you've been in that situation and I'm guessing that most of you here have because you you're here 
you don't know how you don't understand how people want you to deal with that so you think i don't understand therefore i'll back away and see what other people do so you don't make it awkward well yeah i think it's it's difficult for us because we actually know how how we feel but then i think if we hadn't have lost a loved one and one of our best friends had would we even have a clue how the hell to react or what the hell to do like i think even now that i've experienced it when somebody close to me loses somebody that they love i'm still a bit like holy shit I, but i think it's different now because now you know how they're feeling and how much hurt they're feeling and you just want to be like oh you just want to like cuddle them and swaddle them and be like it's going to be okay um yeah it, it, those are like a couple of days weeks months years after your loved one dies and those relationships that you have with friends i think they're they're difficult and they're definitely becoming very very different um but yeah we'll definitely talk a lot more about that later because i know kind of friendships and relationships are a huge thing that people have to navigate after losing a loved one um but that's enough about me for a little bit um emma you touched on your story before fire away uh okay so i was 12 years of age and my mum got diagnosed with breast cancer so naturally as a 12 year old i was like mum's gonna die uh and i was hysterical thinking oh my god i'm gonna go through school and the rest of my life with a dead mum um <laughs> she didn't then she didn't die then um i got an extra six years with her which was great and i look back now and i'm very grateful that i did um but basically yeah she was diagnosed with breast cancer when i was 12 and she was 42 and if any of you guys, I'm sure a lot of you have, have been touched by cancer, you'll know that it's the five year mark, isn't it? Where people go, okay, you're five years, it looks as though you're clear. And I remember very clearly saying to my mum, mum, you're five years, it's, it's nearly up, isn't it now? We're nearly there. And like that week, she'd gone to have a mammogram and it had come back and it had spread everywhere, basically. And we were given about nine months. Uh, and during that period, she got married, uh, I cut her hair for her, I shaved it all off. It was like this kind of, I was, I was 18, uh, I was 17 actually at the time and it was kind of this whirlwind thing where I was bumbling my way through college, coming home to my mum kind of in the same way Kat said, wanting to believe she was going to live but really knowing she was going to die and that in itself is a muddle of emotions to try and get yourself, get your head around. Um, she i turned 18 in the february and over here we celebrate mother's day on the last sunday in march i think it is is it that's yeah. right yeah the last one and she actually died on the 31st of march um i think it was like a day after mother's day and it quite often mother's day falls on the anniversary of my mum's death so that's a really fun day guys the irony of it <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah uh, she she passed away and um my mum and dad actually split up when i was seven uh, my mum was my grandparents only child um and we have a really close bond with them as cat knows they're the best people ever my grandparents so me my twin brother and my older brother um do everything we can basically to look after my grandparents in the way that they look after us because there is no one else there for them now um and shortly after uh, shortly after mum died because obviously i turned 18 a few months later i went to university and in pretty much the same way cat described i had no idea i just no idea of my identity didn't know how to handle this thing um, because none of my friends had experienced a death like that so i didn't really know how to express it so i used to get drunk and cry to strangers in toilets um and they don't think if I'm, anybody else has ever done that yeah. because i know i've done that <laughs> yeah. a lot <laughs> yeah <laughs> They always used to think you crying over a boy. And I'm like, I wish I was crying over a boy right now. This is not a guy. It's my mum. And yeah, I had like a really weird time. Uh, struggled a lot with my mental health throughout uni with, because I didn't really understand it. Um, and I think understanding yourself and the emotions you feel and why is a huge part of grief and being able to cope with it. Um, so uh, it took me quite a few years, quite a few breakdowns until I actually sought help and therapy and i recommend it to anybody because i just think you don't have to be in the darkest of places for help to help you but i allowed myself to get really really low and yeah and obviously later on like kat said in the podcast we'll talk about how we found happiness like true happiness within ourselves again but that was a huge part of it it was a huge huge part of it and um i don't know any of your guys situation but i think we can all agree that death is only one aspect of it you know the day your parent dies um is is one day that's horrific but it's the aftermath that most people don't talk about a lot of people leave 
that after that bit they kind of they're there for the initial hit there's a funeral people gather around you but it's the text messages that you get like from people that you hardly know offering their undying support and that they're there for you and then you'll never you you never hear from them again until you maybe you post a picture of that person on instagram and they're like always here for you babe and you're like no you're not (laughs) yeah thanks but you're not um (laughs) but it's kind of like um you know it's that kind of yearning for some sort of understanding in this world and that feeling of loneliness that I'm sure we've all felt that you kind of lie there and one thing that I have learned is that we are not alone in our grief because however you're dealing with it we a lot of us all of us here pretty much are going through it um but I felt such a loneliness such a feeling of being different from people not almost not wanting people to know my situation or my experience because I felt shame and I was like why do I feel shame mm. about this but it's like we all want to fit in don't we we don't want to be the weird one um now I've embraced that I'm more than happy being the weird one but <laughs> for quite a long period that plagued me and I didn't want to be the odd one out um Can I ask anyway when you obviously you went to uni very soon after your mum died yeah did did you tell people straight straight away when you met them because obviously you live with people don't you and you, you've got that first day and people are like say three things about yourself like three fun facts <laughs> that was one of yours like yeah you my mum just that? died um <laughs> no I didn't because I didn't want to be known as that person but um I don't know how, but people found out. God knows, genuinely God knows how. Maybe maybe it came out in one conversation with one person and then I was in my uni halls and I remember a girl who I ended up being, she was my best friend at uni, um, befriended me on a night out and she said, oh, I was having pre-drinks with the girls and they said you were having a rough time tonight. They said it might be because your mum died and you were upset about it. And I was like, I had no idea everyone knew about this. So that kind of added to the idea that everyone knew and I was the girl with the dead mum. So I was like, great. Um, But she had lost her father on Christmas day so she'd taken that and come to me to kind of get me under a wing and help me and so that was a real uh, that was a blessing really that she had found out yeah I mean a lot of you are saying on this uh chat now that you know grief support groups have been really helpful for you and especially ones for like young adults and stuff and I think if you just take a moment now to realize that there's there's 31 people all together on this call and that's 31 people more then who you think understands how you're feeling once you lose somebody that you love. Like for me, after my mum died, I was like, nobody understands how this feels. Like I've lost the most important person in my life and nobody's ever going to get it. And right now there's 31 of us on a call who all get it. And I think that in itself is just like the most amazing and powerful thing like ever. Um, so yeah, I really appreciate the fact that you're all kind of talking to each other. And yeah, if you all want to introduce each other whilst we're chatting, that's cool as well you know you'll probably find people that you kind of resonate with and get along with um is there any point now that you guys want to ask us any questions about our stories or anything you want to know more about then yeah just let us know in the chat thing if you can't find it you like hover on the screen and press chat at the bottom just in case (laughs) um but yeah i mean i think both emma and i lost our our mum during you know quite pivotal years you know you kind of go into uni or college and um and you're kind of you're put in a re- really vulnerable state and it can take a really long time to get to know yourself because you're already trying to get to know yourself at that age like you've been at school and at high school all those years and you've been kind of maybe pressured to act a certain way because of how other people around you are acting and then suddenly you kind of realize what's important when that person dies and you realize that now it's like oh my god I've got to figure out how the hell to support myself because that person who would have supported me is no longer there um, and I'm aware quite a lot of you on here as well or maybe not a lot but you know you might have lost both of your parents and that can leave you know it can leave you feeling really isolated and really alone and you've got to be the one that takes care of yourself and you've got to get to know yourself to be able to do that um but yeah that's you know it's it's super difficult no, I think you're right. I think you, you have to all of a sudden step up and become a grown up ahead of your time, you know, and you're watching all of your friends um, just carry on with their daily life and, do, and, and your world's kind of stopped and you have to just sort of get out there. You know, you find yourself packing up the belongings of your loved one and taking them to a charity shop or, you know, having to deal with like, okay, did they pay this bill? Did they pay that bill? What's this? And you kind of sit in there going, what happened? Like, you know, a year ago, I was sat here with it. We were a full, we were a family and now this person's gone and it's like, 
the, the significance of that person. They are, you know, a lot of the time they're the glue that holds the family together. So when they're gone, it isn't even just you it's impacting. When you walk into that home or wherever you are and you can be around all of your family and even not want to talk to them about it because you're worried about upsetting them. Mm -hmm. And then you're all kind of feeling, and do you know what, if you, if you have family that you, have vocalized your feelings to and that and you talk through it i think that's amazing i think that is one of the best ways of coping and keeping that person there with you um, but not everyone has that i think a lot of people kind of through feelings of wanting to protect other people with that they love don't talk about their feelings don't share their concerns their worries or how they and actually it's only later on that you realize just how beneficial that can be the talk in itself massively massively um somebody here has asked us how do you go about making friends after your mum's died? Um, she started at a brand new college this January and due to the virus, she's now back home, but she's like kind of worried that going back, it's still going to be really hard to make friends. Um, so I think um, if, you're, uh, if you're an anxious person anyway, it can be difficult making friends. Um, I remember if this is of any consolation at all, um, being dropped off at uni by my family and being dumped in this big room and then them leaving and just getting on the bed, shutting my eyes and going, I've never felt this alone in all my life. And the last thing I wanted to do was open that bedroom door, go out and introduce myself to the people I was going to live with. And in fact, that first night, they all went on a night out and I made the mistake, some would call it, of not going out because I was like, I just can't bring myself to do this. Mm -hmm. um, what I would say is... Um, you will learn to trust yourself and know that you are a good friend if you as painful as it is if you put yourself in those situations um that is the first step in beginning to, to sort of be your own friend if you if you're your own friend if you know you know what I'm, I'm a good friend i would want me as a friend that almost encourages you to step outside of those comfort zones yeah. i don't think it's i don't think it's an easy thing to do particularly as you know the loss of a parent can leave you feeling really isolated but even join groups find things we're, we're all connected online now you know find things like this where you can speak to people where maybe even you know join things where you don't have to see someone face to face at first where you can you can send messages to each other or you have common ground over something because that's so important i think yeah. it can be the building blocks of something if you have that common ground with someone what would you say kat you know what? i think it's really difficult i think making friends in general when you're dumped into a new place can be incredibly daunting um and i think especially if you're kind of giving yourself a hard time over your grief and i think a lot of us have kind of thought oh my god i'm grieving i'm boring like nobody wants to be around me because I'm going to be a bore because I'm sad and like that like is not the case like yeah okay like you're sad but you know around the right people you aren't sad all the time you're allowed to smile when you're grieving and I think we give ourselves a really hard time for feeling happy when somebody that we love has died quite recently and I think similar to Emma you know it's hard but I think you have to kind of jump straight into those situations and just trust that there will be people there that will love you just for who you are i think i think ease yourself in like do things slowly don't kind of like approach people in a group and just kind of think that the friendships the, the relationships are going to build really quickly and naturally friendships i think take effort and we can become quite guilty of maybe thinking that a lot of people should give more effort to us because we've been through a hard time and it's taken me a long time to learn that i have to put probably sometimes twice as what seems what seems to me like twice as much effort because I find it difficult to invest my time into things like that and um, back to people to nurture those friendships and I think it's important to do it because they're so you know friendships are the most valuable things. I, I agree uh, but just coming from a slightly different angle um, with that as well Kat I think when you lose someone you love you're kind of left with this hole in your heart and a lot of love still to give and that person's not there to give it to yeah. so I think and I know I've been guilty of investing that love in the wrong people sometimes and I think it's also important to remember that when you lose that person uh, and you can lose this, a sense of self and self-worth with that um not to allow yourself to be taken for granted just because of your situation. So not to give, I mean, give love, give all the love in the world that you have. I'm, I'm all for that, but don't stay in relationships. And I mean, friendships, whatever that relationship may be. I think it's important to remember that um, just because you've lost a parent um, doesn't mean that you have to um, 
tolerate not being treated as well as you should mm. just because you have all this love to give and you want to put it out there if that makes sense does that yeah. make sense no yeah 100 percent. I, I know what i'm trying to say i've also seen someone say um they don't want to feel like they're wallowing or are they wallowing and just quickly on that because i know me and kat have spoke about this before feel like feel and and know that emotions are there if you if you run from an emotion one of the first things i was taught in therapy was it's going to come back harder mm. because it in your mind it thinks you're running from it um so feel it and feel it and do you know what on those days where you feel utterly terrible like know that tomorrow is a new day and it isn't going to feel exactly the same you might still feel terrible tomorrow but you might feel one percent less terrible mm. but feel it please don't try and run from that or feel that it's not okay to be wallowing you have lost one of the most significant people in your life and you have every right to wallow you can wallow like five years later i wallow to this <laughs> day like my, my mum died like nearly five years ago and sometimes i'm like I fucking hate my life. Like, <laughs> because you're allowed to do it. Like, we're human. Like, somebody here said before, um, is it kind of like normal to get really pissed off with people who don't appreciate their parents? Hell yes. Like, oh my God. When I see people around me treating their parents like crap or being rude to their parents, or right now, obviously, a lot of us are in, in lockdown. And um, for me on Instagram, it's not the people that are baking banana breads and doing workouts that are kind of grinding me down. It's the people that are spending all this quality time with their parents and then being like, oh, I can't wait to get out on the piss with my friends. And I'm like, no, like appreciate what's going on around you right now and all this time that you've got to spend with that parent. Like you know, you're blessed. Yeah. And I think that's one of the biggest lessons that everyone here right now has learned is that you don't know how lucky you are until you've lost them. But I also um, think, you know, when I hear my friends moaning about their parents or whatever, I, I think it's in, in, important to almost look back to you know what the days when we had our parents and we'd give anything just to be sat on a park bench for five minutes with our parent right now but we too were those people at one point we moaned I know I did I, yeah. I put my hand up and say I moaned about my mum I'm sure I did you know throughout throughout high school you know oh my mum's done this and they don't mean it and sometimes my friends will go I feel terrible saying that because you'd give anything to have five minutes with your mum but you know what like it's kind of it, it, it's human nature it's human nature not to know what you've got till it's gone and it's human yeah. nature to, to, for other humans to annoy us so they aren't being insensitive but you do have every right to feel like yeah, we can't help it no you can't i mean i go out sometimes you know if i go for food or something um which i do a lot when we're allowed um i see you know um if i see a mother and a daughter together laughing i'm like oh can we not please <laughs> me <laughs> rude do you not know what i'm going through <laughs> but then i take myself to the toilet i have a look at myself in the mirror and go no i must sort this out they've got every right to be happy and i think it's okay it's okay to feel that way but do remember we were that person one one mm. time i think that actually brings us on quite nicely to mother's day because i think for all of us here one of the hardest things about mother's day is seeing all of those things on your social media feed of all of your mates posting photos of them and their mom being like oh my god like i'm so grateful for my mum today and you know and you feel it's a bit like a personal attack sometimes I think if you're sat there and you're looking at all of this and it, you're kind of putting yourself in a really crappy situation um and I used to really dwell on that and even now on Mother's Day if I'm honest I will just remove myself from social media because I can't deal with it but I'm actually I'm trying to become a bit more empathetic with it with regards to look at all of these people who are appreciating their mum today and you know how great it is that they're doing that and it's really really hard to do and that's kind of why I do take myself off the platform entirely but yeah it was one of my best friends who's also lost a parent that said like I don't get so angry about these days anymore because I try and see it from their point of view and that it's a celebration for them to appreciate their their parents but it doesn't stop it from being you know one of the harder days in the calendar year of many hard days that we have to go through um as a motherless son or daughter I agree with that and I think it's um it's on top of the emotion of going, oh, I think you build up to it. You go, Mother's Day is approaching because you see the adverts everywhere and you're like, oh, here we go. I just want this day over and done with. But it's also the, because I know, you know, I'll visit my mum's grave um, and take her a card. And it's even those little things that you don't often think about until it happens, like going into a card shop, trying to find a card that is appropriate for a dead mum because there isn't a section of that. Yeah. Like, 
there isn't you don't you know and and it's the awkwardness of being the person that has to stand in the card shop for half an hour longer than everyone else because you're going through every card trying to find appropriate words because you can't put like on mother's day mum put your feet up have a piece of cake and chill out yeah <laughs> she, she can't can she so it's kind of like that it's those it's little out things it too much, and it's, <laughs> Oh, I lost you then, Kat. Sorry, what did you say? I said I think she's chilling out a little bit too much. I think that's yeah, good. she's doing that every day. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it is, it's that kind of, um, it's the little things that you that people, other people might not even think about until you're in that situation. And it's kind of like, you know, the, again, it's the awkward conversations of friends knowing it's Mother's Day. So then they, they're like, oh, what do I say? What do yeah. I say? how do I go about that and it's kind of like just talk to me we can just talk and it's okay to do yeah. that I, I won't lie guys I'm I'm very I'm quite bad for like you know unnecessary jokes but um, on like Mother's Day in, in particular I have a group chat obviously with all my girlfriends and stuff and all of them are like oh what's everyone doing today for Mother's Day blah blah, blah. and I'm like I'm crying guys what about you yeah <laughs> and I was like oh god <laughs> sorry Kat and I'm like no it's fine like, no it's <laughs> one of those things you, no but you're right Kat I do that and on that whole thing of about you know feeling envious of other people who get to spend time with their parents uh, and, and hearing them moan about it um, me and Kat both share a bit of dark humour because quite often that can get you through grief um, it can be one of the things that helps a bit I think and um, so if I hear my friends moaning about the parents I'll go oh tell me about it my mum has not shut up all day <laughs> and like they feel really uncomfortable but I'm like there you go that shut you up didn't it <laughs> <laughs> literally um oh yeah so many of you are quite on here now it's yeah it's fabulous um yeah oh, the people that deal with it through humor yeah. yeah but somebody's put one of my friends apologizes every time she brings up her mum oh my god honestly i mean you know bless them bless their hearts they're trying to be you know they're thinking about you but it can be difficult like we are, we're really hard to please right guys like we're really difficult one of us part of us is like just don't talk about your mum to me like i don't want to hear it the other part of us is like don't not talk about her in front of me like it's fine don't worry about it i think for our friends about they're just like what the hell do you want from me like, what am i supposed to do um, We're a roller coaster. yeah i mean i do think you know we do make it quite quite difficult for people um if you if you as well talking about like mother's day ads and stuff and yeah unfortunately i was still bombarded with them because ours was a little bit earlier in the year but mother's day ads suck like you have a lot of people at the, moment, um, at the moment, which is amazing, who send out emails, companies do, and say, like, if you, you don't want to hear from us this Mother's Day, let me know, and you can unsus unsubscribe. And there's a few companies like that in the UK at the moment, which is amazing. But then the next day, I'll be targeted with an ad from that very same company on Instagram, like, buy something for your Mother's Day. And I'm like, seriously? <laughs> like, you're trying to be good, but I, I'm on social media more than I'm on my emails. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it is true. It's, it's very difficult to get away from. And I think, you know, as you guys will know, um, I think particularly that first year, or maybe it's unique to everyone, but that first year, it's, it's Mother's Day, it's birthdays, it's Christmas, mm. it's every single event that is supposed to be about family, love, joy, where we're basically put under pressure to be having a great time with our loved ones. And there's this big gaping hole in your family because that person isn't there. And I think particularly that first year, those milestones can be really, really tough because you and your entire family, depending on how big your family is, are all so aware and you kind of all going what should we do for it then you know and it's kind of like oh, it's so you know. awkward it is because it's like do it and and you know on christmas day i don't know what you guys do but we pencil in a trip to the grave so that we can all go and, and be with mom and it's like it's these things that if, if that hasn't happened, people don't have to do that. But we have to, you know, after we've all sat down and eaten a big meal and pudding, we then have to, you know, get up and go to the grave. And it's like, it always digs up the memories of when that person was there every single year. You know, we used to do a family quiz. And I remember the year before mum died, me and her were on the same team. And there was like so much laughter and warmth in the room. And then the following year, it's like, bam, bam, there's, bam, there's just, there's just this that is you know it's it's tough it's tough guys isn't it yeah yeah Mother's Day like it's like just, one, it's of just the, um, one of the one of the many events in the calendar year that we find difficult so you've got Mother's Day you've got birthdays you've got Christmas you've got our own birthdays their birthdays death, death anniversaries the list just goes on and I think as well as that it's big events like your graduation getting your first big job have, getting married having a baby and all these things that we're so kind of scared of um but I think 
um, one of the most important things is to create a space on every single one of those days that you've got, create a space for yourself for you to acknowledge that person. Um, it doesn't have to be anything big. I kind of say to a lot of the people who follow the, the parent club, try and do one thing today that your mum would have really loved, whether that be going for a walk if she loved being in nature, making her favourite meal, listening to one of her favourite songs, reading her favourite book, like just kind of acknowledging it in some shape, way or form, I find is really useful. And it's something that I try and do on one of these, like on one of these many kind of events. Um, on my birthday in particular, I'm really lucky to have a voicemail from my mum that she sent me on like my 19th birthday when I wasn't at home. And I didn't answer the phone when she called me, thank God, because I now I've got this voicemail from her singing happy birthday down the phone to me. So every day on my birthday, I know that it's going to be a really hard day. I wake up in the morning, I listen to the voicemail, I cry my heart out. And then I, I think, right, that's me. I'm going to kind of try and compartmentalise that. And I'm going to try and enjoy this day that was given to me because I'm so blessed to be here and to have it. Yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right. And it's kind of that, um, in fact, I'll get to that in a second, but you're right, Kat, about doing things that remind you of them. You know, sometimes it can hurt and it can be painful and sometimes it can be elating and give you this joyous feeling, this very same thing. So, for example, my mum was a huge Bruce Springsteen fan. Like, he was on in our house every day. She'd be dancing to him. So before I came on here tonight, I had him on in my bedroom, like, and it gave me this kind of fuel and fire in my belly of, like, oh, mum would be so proud of what I'm doing tonight, that I'm getting to meet a load of people in similar situations. Um, but then other times, the very same songs can make me cry. And and it's all those emotions that grief is all encompassing like that, isn't it? It's not a, a linear graph. You don't just go grief 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 I'm okay it's like yeah. all over the place and you feel everything everybody um, you do that everybody who hasn't lost somebody expects that like after like a couple of months you're like oh they're probably getting a little bit better now like you know that's yeah. how it works. no honey no it's not <laughs> yeah and actually you can be in shock for years like when I was at uni and I was getting drunk I don't think I, I mean not all the time guys just to be clear but quite a lot um I don't think I fully realized what this was that was making me behave this way and it was an escapism it was running from these feelings and I think so so my path of going avoid 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 just constantly trying to find this high of I'm just going to go out all the time and have a great time, have a really low, low the next day and need people around me all the time. It took me to get a, a, quite a few years after that to then go, oh, maybe that was me kind of not wanting to grieve the loss of my mum. Mm -hmm. And then bam, all of a sudden, three, four, five years later, I'm sat in therapy just starting to properly grieve or how you know the grief as in talking about it and allowing the emotions to come come through and I think that is one of the biggest biggest things to remember is that everything that you are doing is absolutely okay you are allowed to grieve in whichever way you feel you need to and nobody should ever make you feel guilty or like you should be over it or like there is a time period that isn't it's unique to you in that respect Oh yeah, massively, massively. I agree with that. Um, somebody on here has said that she finds it really hard when the brother and father don't want to talk about their mum on her birthday or on Mother's Day or their anniversary. Um, so I rely a lot on my extended family for that kind of support. Um, and I've turned to them a lot, but I also rely on this grief community. And honestly, guys, like there are so many on like Instagram or Facebook right now of like these grief groups for like younger people. And you will find just how you guys are right now in this chat, you're talking to each other. People are there and they're ready to listen and they're ready to understand how you're feeling. And even though it might not be the closest person to you that you wish you could talk to, like your closest relatives and stuff, sometimes just talking to somebody who actually understands how the heck you feel actually just helps so much. Um, I think we, we put a lot of pressure like mentally to think, I want to be able to talk to my dad about this. But sometimes, you know, those family members just aren't the right people for it. Um, and I, yeah, I massively rely on even, even my extended family or yeah, the people on my dead parent club account, honestly, they're absolute legends. <laughs> like they've been, they've been there th for me through like so much. No, I think that's right. I think it's about, um, yeah, finding the right people to talk to because it can feel really lonely if you're around the wrong people. It, you know, if you're around people that are like closed books and you're a really open book, um, or maybe, do you know what? Maybe you're the closed book because Kat and I are both very vocal people, but actually there are people who want to grieve quietly as in they don't want to talk to everyone about it. You might be one of those people. And again, like that's okay, but 
it's important to be around the people um, that understand that and are going to respect that because um, you have a right to grieve in your own way. And I think, like Kat says, that whole pre the feeling of pressure, putting pressure, like we don't have enough pressure on ourselves anywhere, like bumbling through life without a parent or two parents. Um, you don't need that added grief of like, oh, is it appropriate for me to talk to this person? Can I be honest? Can I be open? Like, put yourself around people. You'll both, you'll all be able to sit there now, I guarantee, and think of even one, just one person in your life who you can sit there and have a frank and honest conversation. I hope for all of you that you do have one person. And it, for me, it was my best friend, Hannah. And selfishly, I would ring her at 3 a.m., bawling my eyes out down the phone quite frequently, and tell her that, you know, I didn't know what to do. My life's a mess. And she would have to sit there on the phone for two hours telling me everything's going to be okay. I really hope that you have even just one person, mm -hmm. and or that you're meeting each other now and you find that in one person to talk to, because that can really, really help. Because if they understand how you're grieving and, and you feel on a level with them, that's an absolute game changer. Yeah, 100%. Um, somebody's actually come on here whose mum died just before COVID took off in the US and I can only imagine how difficult it must be right now for those of you who had a very recent loss and you're now stuck isolating whether that be on your own or just with very limited number of people around you because a lot of us kind of try and you know distract ourselves from our grief by going out and being really busy and just getting stuck into work or doing as much as we can and I did a podcast on this recently because I asked people in my community, you know, how has lockdown been for you or what's it taught you? And there was a huge mix of people like some were saying, it's amazing. I've been able to face my grief head on and I'm able to like go through it. Other people were like, I'm finding it really difficult because I've got nothing to distract me. And I can, you know, I, I can only imagine that this time is really hard, but I hope that it's giving you an opportunity to get to know yourself better and you know i think getting to know yourself is one of the most powerful tools you can have when it comes to your grief journey because by getting to know yourself you know what makes you happy what triggers you what you need to do when you're feeling a certain way what makes you feel good whether that's baking or exercising or just sitting down and watching a film um if what if what makes you feel good is sitting down and doing nothing all day but eat food and watch a series when you're having a bad day do that and don't feel guilty for doing it. I think right now during this whole pandemic, you have to put yourself first and that's a priority. But I do think you should try and grab this opportunity with both hands to get to know yourself inside and out so that once this whole thing is over and we're all allowed out again, we're allowed to see our friends and stuff, you know what you need to do to look after yourself because life is busy as hell, like in between work and friendships and social lives and seeing family sometimes we put we don't put ourselves first when we should so i think if you can now have like a plan of action for every time grief is really getting you in the gut when you go back to kind of normal life then that can be one of your biggest tools to help you get through this whole grief journey i think i think you're absolutely right i think and and also remember that me and kat are sat here years down the line with a greater understanding of who we are so if you're sat here listening now going yeah, but I feel alone. I'm not sure I do understand who I am. Just please know that that was us. That was us. And mm. there are people around you that are proof that you will find yourself. And finding yourself doesn't mean that you're going to go, oh my God, I'm great. This, I'm the greatest person ever. It means that you're going to understand your flaws. You're going to understand what you like, what you look for in other people and what you seek in this world. And and, and what you want to give, what you want to give to people. And I think if you can find that, like Kat says, um, you can almost, it, it gives you a, a much greater feeling. It gives you that identity back that, that losing a parent can strip you of quite often, actually. Mm -hmm. It can almost either slash your identity by 50% because you've only got one of them or <laughs> completely rid of it and you don't know, like, you know, you don't know who you are anymore. And I think finding that if somebody had said genuinely to me, to 18 year old Emma, that as 30 year old Emma, you will sit here with a calmer head on your shoulders, a greater understanding of who you are and you will find inner peace and happiness. I wouldn't have believed you. No. But it happens and it will happen but it is a journey and if you are sat there I know there's a lot of people here we can't see but if you're sat there going 
that's me. I don't know who I am and I don't know how to get there. Please trust that if you embrace all those feelings, good and bad, you will get there. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, I know that grief can bring out the worst in us. Um, I myself, after my mum died, I went down a really, really bad spiral mental health wise and grief and mental health, you know, they're massively connected. I'm sure a lot of you here have experienced some really, really dark days. And, um, I kind of got to the point where I was like crying all the time and, um, I wasn't getting out of bed and I just hated everything. I didn't want to do everything. And I could not picture a future without my mum. Like, honestly, like the kind of metaphor that I said at the start of this, when like you're swimming towards a light, but you just can't get there. I just couldn't env envisage ever being happy again. And a lot of people I've spoke to have felt the same because you just think, how am I ever supposed to live a really full and con like contented life now that I know how painful it is to not have this person with me? And it took a long time for me to kind of figure out what the hell to do. And um, I was like breaking down at home and my dad was like, ah, like if any of you, any of you could meet my dad, you'd be like, oh God, because he just, he just did not know how to handle that. And he was like, I'll pay for you to get counsel counseling. We'll, we'll just do that. Um, and counseling isn't for everybody. I don't think it helped me hugely. It was good to have somebody to talk to, but it wasn't my biggest thing, I don't think, but it definitely led me in the right path. And that's why you know, like Emma says, counselling can be a really good option for you if you are struggling. Um, but it took me a good few years to kind of get out of that, that dark space. It was very gradually and very slowly. And I think a few things helped me with that, um, which kind of leads us on, I suppose, to finding the happiness in our grief, which can be really hard to do. Yeah, it's a, it's not an easy path as as we all know finding finding happiness through grief. And I just read a comment then from someone saying about um, worrying about other people and uh, catastrophizing things. I know I did that. I used to go through a period when I was twenty four, twenty five of, and this is genuine. Any phone call I would get, it, unless it was one that I was expecting, I used to answer and say, "What's happened." or who's died you need to tell me and um, because I just used to assume I was getting a phone call because someone was dead um and in one of my first jobs um I was a traffic and travel reporter so I was on the radio telling people what was going on on the roads I didn't realize at the time that this was probably not the ideal job for someone who worries because you're seeing every single accident on the roads all around you so obviously my mind then was like oh my god my brother oh my dad like who's died who's involved so I'd spend and half my time texting my family check they're checking they're okay in between updating you know other people on whatever was going on on the roads but it was at that point um and I'm not afraid to say this anymore that I got so low that I genuinely looked at myself on I remember the day very very vividly and I said okay you've got two options here you're either going to take your own life and you're not going to live or you're going to talk to somebody and and then and then and this might sound dark but i said you're going to talk to somebody and then you'll still have the option to take your own life but it's probably worth doing that bit anyway yes. you know yes. because then that might help i didn't believe fully that it would but i wanted it to because i was desperate for anything to help me and i went into therapy i had cognitive behavioral therapy and i went in an absolute wreck and i came out feeling 50 percent lighter because for the first time in my life i'd been completely frank and honest with somebody about my feelings mm. and that was me probably embarking on the actual understanding of my grief and learning that all the unhealthy habits I'd developed, you know, drinking, escapism, trying to, you know, stay on a constant high, never wanting to do anything that I didn't enjoy because, you know, it wasn't fun. Therefore, you know, how dare someone make me do that? My mum's died. You know, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want any hardship in my life because I thought I'd had enough of that. Um, but I think, yeah, I think that, um, really really helps because it, it allows you to talk openly honestly and be yourself and talking to somebody who's a professional because they understand they see people like us day in day out mm. um and and then being able to be more open with other people because lo and behold the moment you tell people you're having therapy it's amazing how many other people you realize are also in the same situation and then you're like wow there's a whole team of us here and we've been friends for like four years and not spoken about this yeah massively massively and then it, it opens up those conversations and you'd be amazed as well at how your experience and you talking to people 
means that you can then help other people. And I'm sure Kat will agree with me that one of the wonderful things about experiencing grief, particularly at an early age, is that it enables you to help other people in such a unique and empathetic way because yeah. you've been there. You've, you know the drill. Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, hugely, I, I know Jesse Friary is um, watching this right now. Me and Jesse actually recorded a podcast. He's been on the Dead Prank Club podcast um, a few months ago. So it's great to have you here, Jesse. Um, and we, so he actually said the name of his podcast is Grief is My, Super Hit, My Superpower. And that's exactly what we were saying. Like, we, you know, Jesse's actually lost both of his parents. And, you know, something so traumatic and awful and kind of life changing it's actually given him the ability to be there in a way that a lot of people can't for other people that are grieving the loss of somebody that they love. And whether that's a similar loss to you, like a parent, or it could be a friend or just a relative or somebody that they care about, it does put you in a really unique position. And we're actually blessed to be able to offer people that shoulder, that shoulder to cry on and that support because we know more than anybody how isolating grief can be and how nobody understands how you're feeling. Nobody gets it. And when you find somebody that does, you're like, oh my God, where have you been like all of my life? This has been the most refreshing conversation I could have had. Um, so yeah, I completely, you know, resonate with what you're saying there, Emma, as well. And I think other things that have helped me, you know, I'm now five years down the line within my whole grief journey and I can get into the stage where I'm admitting that it's never gonna end. Grief is a lifelong partner. It just becomes a little less heavy on you as life goes on. Um, and I think that's because you learn how to cope more than anything you know the loss is still just as big the loss never gets smaller you just get a little bit more resilient and for me a few things helped um i think it was definitely learning that i couldn't kind of cope with my grief if i didn't give myself my body and my mind space to be able to do that so it's very much like you you have to look after yourself to be able to heal um so that's things like eating well and i'm going to sound like such a bore when i say these things now because i'm going back way back to basics but i found that when i ate and fed myself and fueled myself horrendously it didn't give me the right mental space to be able to grieve properly it just made me kind of made things so much more foggy and awful to deal with um exercise i'm not talking about cardio or going on mad runs and like killing yourself like until like sweating to a drowning in sweat i'm talking going out for a walk like that does wonders um, and I feel like a lot of people are learning that in the UK right now because we're only allowed out once a day to do some exercise so they're like oh my god green trees like this is amazing um, but things <laughs> as small as that can really help um, and I've kind of just found happiness from putting myself first and taking it slow I do headspace and um, I'm acknowledging my grief it can be really easy to go days and weeks without, without actively thinking about your loss it's there and it's kind of in your subconscious constantly but it's really hard to sit and listen and acknowledge it and I think it's so important to actually sit with your grief and it's okay to cry and to wallow in it and um, just try not to let that be then how you spend your whole day or your whole week I think just sit with it acknowledge it feel the emotions go through the waves and then kind of say literally walk through a door like walk through a door frame and be like once i've walked through that frame i'm going to take this day on and i'm going to enjoy it as best as i can and um, literally like that actual metaphor just walking through and then just trying to change your mindset because it is all it takes a lot of work grief isn't just time heals and then it just gets better that's bullshit like time does heal and you know it does get a little bit easier but grief takes work and i think you all have to like everybody has to put a bit of effort in to be able to get to a place where it doesn't control your life anymore you can you control it like you control your like emotions absolutely and i think um you know the longer after after your grief you know initially it, it you you kind of feel like you're lonely you're on your own no one else has experienced this but i think as you go through life you meet new people you have you share experiences you realize that everyone's suffering some kind of battle whether they've lost a parent or not everyone's struggling everyone has demons and i guarantee that any feelings any negative feelings that you feel towards yourself or towards the world every single person in this room and in this world has felt and i found one of the most liberating things for me is knowing that everybody else in the world is as weird as me 
they're just waiting for you to be weird so they can be weird too <laughs> like it's the truth we're not normal doesn't exist and i think as soon as you accept that actually I am just me. I'm made this way. You're made that way. And we will have similarities and differences, but we're all going to have felt shame, guilt, loneliness, unhappiness, sadness. We're all, we all know what happiness feels like. And I think, yeah, I, I think that for me has been one of the most liberating things is realizing that, um, everyone's just waiting to realize that you're as weird as them because that's all we want to do in life we want to be accepted by each other we're all here now because we're all part of a group and we want to hear other stories we want that reassurance that we're not the only one and for me i spent many years um trying to step outside of my comfort zone in order to grow in order to push myself to give myself that inner trust that I'm capable of doing things and I think the more you realize that um that you are capable you are capable of dealing with what you've got and you are capable of running with it and having not just a normal you know healthy life a life that allows you to thrive everybody here has the opportunity it is within you and I know I sound preachy but it's been one of the biggest lessons I am so weird and so are all of us here so take that and just don't be afraid to be who you are dead parent or not everyone's going through stuff that we don't know about and people are so grateful for people like you when when you talk about how what you've been through because then they're not on their own anymore yeah Preach it, sister. It's up to you. Preach it. <laughs> um, we're literally at the end of like our hour. Um, if anybody's got some really quick fire questions that they want to ask, now is your opportunity. If not, if any of you want to kind of get to know each other or want to put your Instagram handles or Facebook names or anything in the chat, then feel free to do that. Um, if in case you want to kind of meet other people and have conversations like this again um and yeah if you want to listen to the podcast it's on all major podcast streaming apps like spotify or apple or anything podbean um it's dead parent club podcast um we're also on instagram at dead parent club podcast facebook twitter at dpc podcast email got a website just search dead parent club and you'll probably find us um yeah honestly emma thank you so much for coming on Thank you for having me and can I just say guys if this is like near the start of your day and you're going to go into your day being on your own in isolation please remember this you've just been in a room full of like-minded people you are not on your own and um, we are all in this together as as far apart as we are as distant as we are from each other we are all in this together it will pass and stay weird yeah yeah <laughs> stay weird guys yeah have a really safe day look after yourselves um, thank you so much for coming on. Honestly, I was terrified that nobody was even going to be here. So <laughs> even though we had like technical dramas at the start, this has honestly been amazing. And I'm super grateful for this space. And, you know, I hope that this kind of maybe felt, made you feel quite positive this morning, hopefully. And you felt you can like walk through that door and start your day. And hopefully you're going to enjoy loads of the other amazing events that have taken place this weekend for Motherless Mother's Day. Um, yeah, sending you all love today. I know it's difficult. But you can do this. We can all do this. We're all together. Um, um, Pat, did you give out your Instagram so yes. people to follow? Yes. Okay. And and um, my, my Instagram is at El Jones UK. I realise that's quite difficult. So at El Jones UK. So you feel free to slide into our DMs and have a chat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> by the way, guys, Emma is like semi-famous over here. So <laughs> we live in a small town. <laughs> but yeah thank you guys thank you guys for having us thank you enjoy your day everybody it was so nice to kind of e-meet you bye bye <laughs>